Royalty is a tricky thing. Some people yearn for it. Others are willing to shed blood just to overthrow it. But if you're born into it, then you know that there is a slew of complicated relationships you have to manage, as well as the welfare of an entire nation. If you ever find yourself to be a royal, then you'll quickly learn that you're in the public eye forever. And sometimes that's not always of admiration, but it's of hatred and anger. Hi, my name is Gabe Bauer, and this is Top Shelf History, where we combine great stories with great drinks. This is Let Them Drink Cake. It is a cocktail I have made for you based on the infamous words of the ousted queen of France, Marie Antoinette. It is a cocktail made with many ingredients. Among them are walnut liqueur, amaretto, white chocolate liqueur, creme de fraise, and chambord. The phrase, let them eat cake, is perhaps one of the most famous in all of world history, purportedly spoken by Marie Antoinette at the end of the 18th century amid the French Revolution. The tone deaf saying sparked tremendous anti-royalist sentiments and really helped spur on the movement, but one has to wonder, why would anybody say something so stupid at such a tumultuous time, and did Marie really say this? Well, if you ask a lot of historians, it's pretty likely that she never said this at all. Originally appearing in a book written by the ever-famous Jean-Jacques Rousseau, the line qu'il mange de la brioche, was attributed to Marie because she was the queen at the time that they became really famous. But when they were originally put to paper, Marie was only 10 years old. She also wasn't the queen of France, she was just a princess in Austria. So if this is the case, then who really spoke these words? Or who was Jean-Jacques Rousseau referring to? Well, most historians believe that this is actually in reference to King Louis XIV's wife, Marie Therese, who lived a hundred years before Marie Antoinette. Pretty crazy stuff. But if that's the case, and Marie Antoinette didn't actually speak these words, then how is it that she lost her head? And what type of queen was she in reality? Well, Marie Antonia Josefa Joanna was born on November 2nd, 1755, and she was the 15th of 16 children brought into the world by Austrian Empress Marie Therese and Holy Roman Emperor Francis I. At the end of the Seven Years' War, Austria wanted to repair its relationship with France, and as one does back in the day, you would do that through marrying up your children. So they offered up Marie and the King of France offered up his son, Louis Ferdinand, the Dauphin, and the future King of France. Now, when Marie became married at the age of 14, she wasn't really expecting to become queen as quickly as she did. But only four years later, King Louis XV would pass away and Queen Marie Antoinette would take the throne of France. She was pretty accustomed to the royal life. After all, she had grown up in it as a princess in Austria, and so she was pretty happy with the partying and throwing balls and enjoying the high life with the French nobility. But for the poor people of France, this was just fodder for their ire for the French nobility because, after all, they felt that they were being shirked. They weren't getting the food that they needed, and all of these lavish balls and parties were just extravagance for extravagance sake, but Marie wasn't so tone deaf that she didn't realize the struggles of her people. She's known, in fact, to actually have invested heavily in charity in order to help support her people, but two major things really tarnished her image with her people, and she really didn't have anything to do with either of them. The first was the theft of a pretty crucial crown jewel, one that had 647 diamonds and was taken to England and then sold off in bits and pieces. Now, you may think to yourself, well, it's just a burglary. What's the big deal? Was it the fact that she didn't provide security? Was it the fact that she didn't, you know, handle the situation well? No. The fact was that the burglar dressed up like Marie Antoinette. That's it. The second reason that Marie Antoinette earned the major ire of the people was for the famous words of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, 
let them eat cake or qu'ils mangent de la brioche. And even though she never said it, it was used by the anti-royalists as propaganda to help prop up the fact that the royalists were so separated from the people that they needed to be taken away. And on July 14th, 1789, an armed mob would storm the Bastille prison and free the people, and thus beginning the French Revolution. Shortly thereafter, Marie Antoinette would find herself on trial, along with her husband, King Louis XVI, facing the crimes of treason and theft. And alongside her husband, King Louis XVI, Maximilien Robespierre, one of the leaders of the French Revolution, considered them guilty. And at only the age of 37, Marie Antoinette and her husband would be beheaded, one of the thousands that would lose their heads to the sharp blade of the guillotine. Once again, we're reminded that history has a propensity to turn bloody, but I'm not gonna focus on that with the creation of our drink. Instead, I'm gonna focus on those ever infamous words, let them eat cake. So let's try to make a drink that tastes like cake. And so let us build our cake, grab our mixer, and we will start off with three quarters of an ounce of both raspberry liqueur. I'm using black raspberry Chambord. So put three quarters of an ounce in there and we'll follow that up with three quarters of an ounce of creme de fraise, which is strawberry liqueur. So this will kind of be like a berry cake, which is one of my favorites and I feel like is pretty French when you think about it. French patisserie, think of French patisserie. There we go. We will then follow that up with one ounce of white chocolate liqueur. Because as we're building this drink, what I'm really thinking of here in regard to building an alcoholic version of cake is that this is my filling. You know, this is what's in between those layers of delicious cake and has all the sweetness and the fruit. That's what we're doing here with these first three ingredients. Next, we are going to follow it up with our really cakey portion of our drink. And for that, we are going to put in a quarter ounce of amaretto, and then we'll follow it up with a half ounce of walnut liqueur. Now, why am I using these two as opposed to perhaps others, like a cake flavor vodka or something like that, that you may see at the store? And the reason why is I think the nuttiness of these flavors and these liquors are really helpful in getting that kind of delicious pound cake or short cake that you may imagine. So it's a really good uh, element to add and will make this even better because they have really good sweetness. All right, now, before we finish off our cakey portion, we also are going to put in a half ounce of French vermouth as well. As you've noticed, most of our ingredients here are French. After all, this is a French drink for a French queen about a French revolution with a lot of French heads rolling. Pardon my French. All right, now we have our cake. We have our filling in between the layers. Now all we need is our frosting. For that, I'm gonna go with cream. This is heavy whipping cream. I decided that this drink is really, really sweet as it is. And I want something that's a little bit more refreshing. So unsweetened cream, whether it's regular or it's heavy, will be a really nice delight. And for that, we're gonna put in about a half ounce. There we go. And we've got all of those elements in there together, but just to up the cake flavor, a little bit more, I'm gonna throw in some cake flavor. This is McCormick cake flavor. It's a lot like an extract, so you have to be really careful about how much you're putting in. I'm only gonna put in like a drop uh, because if you put in too much, it really starts to taste artificial and gross. So and nobody wants that. So I'm gonna be very careful. And that's more than enough for me. Just gonna put the rest of that goodness back in the bottle and put that to our side. Now to make sure that the cream doesn't curdle or separate from all of the acidity of the alcohol, we're gonna put in a couple of cubes of ice. And that will make sure that everything mixes here really nicely. Then we put it on top and we shake. There we go. Forcefully get the top off as one does. 
and we will put this into our white chocolate lined with sprinkles because cake, let them eat cake. I want to drink cake and we will strain our delicious concoction into our glass. And look at that, that beautiful pink color with the white chocolate rim and the sprinkles. Just stick a candle in there and start singing happy birthday, am I right? But before we finish it, just as a little nod to all the berries in there, let's put in a fresh strawberry. And there you have it. Let them drink cake. Because now we have our cake. Let's drink it too. Oh, yeah. That is delectable. All the little flavors come in and it really just reminds me of eating that delicious berry cake you might find at your store or something like that. The cream is refreshing and it's so thick and it's smooth. You have the nuttiness of the amaretto and the walnut uh, liqueur and then you also have the sweet berry undertones and the white chocolate liqueur from the creme de fraise, the chambord, the white chocolate liqueur and it really is every element that you could imagine of a very delicious sweet berry cake and that white chocolate rim is really kind of great because that's kind of the first thing you taste. And if I was royalty, that would certainly be a piece of cake that I would like to have at my royal ball. And that sounds like last call. So it happens to be that Marie Antoinette isn't just famous for the words that she never spoke or the fact that she was the queen of France or the fact that she was beheaded but also for another condition known as Marie Antoinette syndrome. Now, I don't know if you know about Marie Antoinette syndrome, but it's actually used a lot in TV to show when people are at high levels of stress. And this is actually centered around the fact that right before Marie Antoinette had her execution, all of her hair turned white. Now, this is a condition that actually takes place in regular humans under really, really high levels of stress that the scalp hair on the top of your head can actually lose its pigmentation and therefore you can just grow white hair. And that all centers around Marie Antoinette having the same thing happen right before she was beheaded and the fact that she was under so much stress that she lost all of the pigmentation in her hair and she actually died with a white head of hair. Pretty amazing thing to think about. Uh, it's actually known that after the stress starts to die down that the pigmentation can actually come back to your hair and then you can you know, get your color back. But pretty crazy thing, something I really didn't even know about Marie Antoinette and it's a real particular, I guess you could say, symptom of ridiculously high levels of stress. But another point to her legacy that is already pretty storied. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to check out any of my other historically inspired cocktails, you can find them here or you can find them at our website at topshelfhistory.com. There we also have all of our blogs, videos, recipes, and more from all of us here at Top Shelf History. Remember, history is better with a drink. Cheers. Cheers.